Hello everybody, my name is Scott Schutte. I am going to attempt to show you how I built this 8 inch Newtonian telescope. Um, quick overview. Um, telescope, four basic parts. Um, you have a primary mirror, it's all down here. Um, up at the top of the tube is a secondary mirror. You have your focuser and then the tube assembly. A quick look around of everything. Um, key component I am finding out um, needs to be very sturdy. When I get to the that step in the process, I'll show you what I have done to try to beef that up, um, and hopefully. This will be good instructions on how to do this. Here we go. Um, first things first, the design of it. Um, came across the website, it's called Newt for the Web. Um, the actual website is stellafane.org um, if you just google newt for the web this first part of the video i'm going to kind of just walk you through the web design um, on getting all your specifications um, set so if you uh, go to the top tabs here and go to file um, they have a couple of um, sample files down at the bottom here. A little sample new web design. So I have a save design plan. It's DIY 8 inch Newtonian. I just click on that and then open. So this is just the file tab. So now you go into Next tab over is specifications. This is where you enter all your um, primary mirror, secondary mirror, tube length and tube diameter, and all those details. Um, so those are pretty much set um, for whatever design um, size you want to go with. And then you can tweak the different parameters of the fields. So, kind of come through here. Um, the top field is your optics. So you got primary mirror diameter. Um, you can go metric or imperial. Um, I was going back and forth pretty much. Um, design it in metric and build it with um, Imperial. So my mirror set that I got was a 203 um, slash 800 is what it said um, on eBay. Um, and it ended up being um, a lot closer to 750 um, for the focal length. Um, so the primary mirror diameter is your first one. So I entered that in 203. Your focal ratio is the next one down. That's your focal length divided by the primary diameter. Um, mine works out to be about 3.7. Um, so this is a very fast lens. Here is Mr. Mirror. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on how I came to the conclusion that it was closer to 750. Um, the guy that I purchased it from on eBay, um, when I asked him about the size, um, he said it ends up being close to 750, not the 800, um, which 
not too big of a deal, but you kind of need to know that exact measurement to design everything. Um, next one down is diagonal mirror minor access. Um, your minor access is your width across. Um, major access is the oval, um, long ways. So this mirror set had a 70 millimeter. Um, this number actually turned out to be a little bit big. Um, so when you enter your mirror set um, into it, you can hit calculate and then it'll give you um, some suggestions in this box here. Um, so the diagonal obstruction of primary diameter, um, so that's the obstruction of your secondary mirror um, compared to your um, primary mirror. So if this is a 70 millimeter um, uh, diameter, um, divide that into the 203 for your primary. Um, mine works out to be 34% um, is what it ended up being, which is kind of high. Um, it says to minimize 20% um, or less is a good goal. So the next section down is the tube size. Um, so the tube inside diameter. Show you. This is just a concrete form tube. Um, to get 10 inch, um, you have to special order that. Um, um, Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot has 8 inch and 12 inch. Um, but for an 8 inch mirror, um, you ideally want 10 inches um, for the diameter. So I was able to find this at special order on Lowe's is where I ended up getting the 10 inch tube. Um, super cheap, 10 bucks, um, 10, 11 bucks or something like that. Yeah, for what size you want, it says right here, allow half inch to one inch around the primary mirror. So if you have a six inch mirror, then you yeah, can get away with the eight inch tube. These are the numbers that I had to play around with, the focuser to the front of the tube. That is um, from here to the front of the tube. Um, you want to leave yourself enough um, meat in front of it um, just so you can attach your um, spider. Ended up settling on 130 millimeters, which works out to be five and a quarter inches, I do believe. Um, then you got mirror face to back of tube. So that's from the mirror surface um, to the end of your tube. Um, um, when I built the mirror cell, it ended up working out to be about 91.1 millimeters. Um, so those are the things I assembled the mirror cell first. I'll show you that and following steps here and then the bottom dimensions here is for the focuser itself um, focuser minimum height 76.2 millimeters uh, spare focus and travel not quite sure what um, that is supposed to be kind of red if you look on the sides of each of these fields there's question marks you can click on the question mark and it'll explain things a little bit better I'm still a little fuzzy on um, those kind of things um, additional height for camera I didn't know what to put in for that so left that at zero a little glitch in my camera there um, so where was I uh, Crawford two inch focuser um, having the 
wider diameter um, definitely works a lot better um, cheaper one like I said you can get them for about 35 40 bucks for the um, inch and a quarter tube um, what that will do is cut off on your um, your image and you'll get vignetting um, around the edges a little bit more Yeah, so this will basically calculate on what the overall length of the tube is going to end up being. Um, and that gives you your mirror to the center line of the focuser. Um, I'm going to skip over eyepieces as the second one or the third one. Um, this is called the ray trace. So with the different parameters that you enter in, um, this will give a good diagram of what you can tweak and um, what you need to adjust on. So the front of the focuser tube or the, um, the front of the tube to the focuser too much of this and then you're gonna get a little more vignetting so like I said I played around with that and um, had it decently long um, without cutting off and let me give you a, a zoomed image So this yellow line here, um, that determines, I think that's a 75% vignetting. Um, let me double check that. Yeah. Yep, the yellow is the 75% zone. Um, so my overall design, um, these up here, um, diagonal too small to admit 100% ray. Nope, that's so that's good. Vignetting of 75% ray at front of aperture, none. Vignetting at focuser of 100% ray, none. Um, vignetting at focuser of 75% ray, yes. Um, and that is seen in this yellow here where the light ray is coming from a little bit more extreme angle. Um, it's actually getting blocked by the secondary mirror. Um, so this yellow cone is off of your focal plane. Um, so it doesn't get into your eyepiece or your camera imaging sensor. And what that'll do um, gives you dark around the edges um, slightly and I'm guessing makes it out of focus a little bit. So these are the two that you kind of go back and forth with on um, your specifications and then the ray trace and then look for um, any of these saying yes up here. Like I said, the 75% ray vignetting at focuser, um, mine is in the red saying yes. Um, the only way I could eliminate that is if I got a smaller mirror for the secondary. Um, but it is what it is. <laughs> so can't do much about that. Um, the performance tab, this goes over all the technical data. Uh, not sure what any of this means yet. I will find out later on. <laughs> um, yeah, so right here, the obstruction of the primary surface area by the diagonal is 12%, um, which does result in a reduction of light gathering ability. Um, so 
um, going by the area, you want that one down around 10%. Um, and if you get that below 10%, then you're 75% ray. Um, should be good. And the rest of it, don't have a clue what any of that is. Um, so the next tab over is your dimensions. So this will go through all your different um, fields um, that you entered in and then basically calculates your tube, your overall tube length. Um, so mine ended up being 762 millimeters, which is um, spot on 30 inches. Um, so that is what I settled on. Settled on 30 because nice and even. Worked out good. Um, and so these just kind of reflect what you put down in your specifications um, fields. Baffles, that is for inside the tube. If you go back to the ray trace, um, these are your baffles. Um, I am not planning on doing much of anything for the baffles except for um, probably just one way in the back. Um, I am putting flocking material all on the inside of the tube um, so that increases the contrast ratio um, yeah I just got some window foam um, yeah half inch thick or three quarters of an inch thick and I'll put one baffle right at the back end of it um, yeah this will tell you the inside diameter of the baffle um, yeah, it gives you the position which is yeah position from the back of the tube um, 192 millimeters um, from the back of the tube inside diameter of the foam or the baffling material is 209 millimeters um, so that's going from the 250 millimeter um, down to 209 um, inside diameter of the actual tube itself. So yeah, that'll probably just give me 5% better quality if I follow that precisely. Um, can be something that you can add later at any time you really want. So, I think that's about it for the design steps. Um, let show you one other thing I did. And I did this little mock up. Um, I just attached these to a board. Um, just use some clamps on a board and put my focuser on it just to get the um, focal length of my primary mirror a little bit more precise um, like i said the mirror said it was an 800 millimeter focal length but it ended up being um, closer to 750. Um, so we just measured from the front of the mirror um, to the center line and just marked it on my one by six board that I um, clamped the stall to and then I just slid this back and forth until I could get things in focus and I found if I moved it I think it ended up being like two inches um, from 750 to 800 I, that's right at about two inches I moved it the two inches, I couldn't get it in focus anymore. So, moved it back to the 750. Next couple steps, um, I will show you how I built these things. Um, and 
Let's kind of take it step by step. So hopefully this will be beneficial to you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, this is a little update on one little mistake I had made um, in my design. I'm go through the specifications here again. Just kind of go through it slowly um, to give a final rundown. Uh, optics stayed the same. Um, obviously, that was all good. Um, the tube um, dimensions, that was all good. Um, but down here at the focus area dimensions, um, this is where I made um, a little measurement mistake. The focuser minimum height, um, I measured it without the inch and a quarter adapter ring on the top. So before I had 76.2, um, as you saw in the previous clip, um, measuring it with the inch and a quarter adapter ring, raised it up to about 80. Um, spare focuser in travel, after doing a little bit more research on that, um, said to put that at about a half an inch, so then that works out to be about 15 millimeters. Uh, so, give that a little run through there. Um, come over to the dimensions. That ended up doing was shorten my tube length um, to 748.2 millimeters. Um, is it yeah right here the mirror face to focus or hole um, so that shrinks the distance between the two mirrors um, a little bit so the way I rectified it was just um, move my primary mirror cell assembly forward and I'll show you that right now Scroll through these so you can take a screenshot of it if you want. So, let me move you over to the telescope. So as you can see, I got the primary mirror cell um, recessed in a little bit. So as you can see, um, the way I fixed the problem was just moved um, the screw holes forward about half inch, five eighths of an inch or so, um, and that gives me um, the right um, focal length coming out the focuser tube itself. First step of making a Newtonian telescope is the mirror cell for the primary. First need to get the diameter of your primary mirror. Mine is 8 inches, um, 203 millimeters to give the metric. Um, so I first started um, take a simple compass and make an eight inch circle um, I added um, axis lines at 30 degrees to mark out my holes for my anchor points and bolts um, main thing to remember is make sure the line, holes line up um, real nice. So what I did was drill the hole in the center and screwed it down to um, the main holder. This diameter is the same as the tube. Um, I got a 10 inch tube, um, ended up being about nine and three quarters um, precisely. So you got to get that measurement perfectly. So once you 
mark your center point. Um, put it in line with that. Um, then I drilled these three holes um, all the way through um, for my springs and bolts. Um, so I'll show you the assembly of this. All the bolts that I used pretty much for the entire project is quarter inch by um, 20 um, is your thread pitch. Um, these bolts are three inches long, I do believe. Um, I also have a handle that I'm going to put on the back side. Um, it's going to be to put the primary mirror in the back of the tube. So we are going to put that on first. This whole assembly will be painted. Paint this all a nice flat black. Don't have to worry too much about this surface because this is going to get covered up by your primary mirror, but we'll make sure the edges get painted nice and black. Um, so, um, to assemble these, um, recess the bolt head into your plywood, and then I put some locking nuts and chamfered out the hole a little bit so it sits down nice and flat. Um, so I had washers down first. Add my springs. Uh, these are 5 16 diameter, uh, 45 gauge I do believe and I think about an inch and a half long. Um, just kind of play around with those dimensions. This is what I ended up settling on. And hopefully they work pretty good. A lot of these things, once I get it all assembled, um, we'll see if I have to redo anything. So, let us mark this up. Press it down. Add my wing nuts to it. And there we have it. These other three holes are for my locking bolts. Um, so this is a push-pull configuration um, to adjust the angle and the tilt. So when you go to make your adjustments for collimation, um, you just back this one off and then you can tighten down your wing nuts and that will tilt an angle. Once you get that in place, and you just draw these bolts up. So once this is all assembled, I also added three little um, divots. Those don't go all the way through. Um, and this is going to be for the adhesion. Um, I'm just going to use this regular silicone. It's an outdoor silicone. Hopefully it should be good. Specifically for window and door projects. So should be good enough, hopefully. Um, if not, please let me know. <laughs> uh, show you the tube here real quick. So with 
handle will make it easier to slip in and then be able to line it up. And I'm quite impressed with that. <laughs> That's the first time I tried fitting it in there. So. So that is this step. Um, next step, I uh, will get back to you. Thank you. Okay, so in this next step, as you can see, got my primary sail um, assembly painted. Um, this is the bottom side. Um, main thing to cover is just that outside rim, so it'll get covered up by the mirror. Um, same with this one, mirror's going on this. Um, added some little plates on to the back side, so the bolts that do the pushing, these are the ones that pull, um, to lock the position in, give it a little something extra to bind to so it doesn't poke into the wood as bad. Um, just using just some modeling, um, little 3D wood puzzle things. Um, just need to add a little bit of space in between the base and the mirror. Like I said, using advanced silicone um, for window door projects. Um, like I said, hopefully that should work pretty good. So, I got three little divots um, offset from my anchor bolts. So, we're just gonna put a big blob in there. If the wooden sticks are just to keep a little bit of space in between so it's kind of floating um, so we're gonna set this down nice and gently Should be enough. And just obviously make sure it's nice and centered. And let that sit up for however long it says. <laughs> yeah, let it set overnight, you probably. Um, yeah, kind of go into some details about the center dot um, when I made the cutout for the plywood on circle um, just made a um, took a piece of paper um, with my compass and made the 8 inch circle and just marked the center um, poked a tiny little hole in at the center point um, laid it on top of the glass and just put a sharpie point right in the center um, and then I came with a little sticker just eyeballed it up I don't know how precise it has to be um, hopefully it's going to be good enough um, next step I'm going to be going on to the secondary mirror and showing you how I assembled that um, made it out of PVC pipe and a couple other pieces parts that I have found here and there so that will be in the next section thanks um, 
This is the secondary mirror holder. Um, obviously, this whole project was to save money um, to purchase this. Cheapest I found was probably close to 100 bucks. Um, these parts, yeah, probably 28 bucks at least, maybe even 30 by the time it's all said and done. Um, nothing too complex though. I've just kind of gone back and forth on um, what I wanted to do. So, this part of the assembly. Um, calipers here. This, I do believe, was inch and a half um, PVC pipe. Um, what determined the size that I ended up going with, um, my secondary mirror is two and three quarters, I do believe. Yep, two and three quarters. Um, so that's already too big. I'm blocking a lot of the light getting to the primary. Um, that should have been closer to probably two and three eighths, two and a half. Um, you want this to be the biggest part. Um, the commercial ones, the um, plastic goes on the outside of it, probably real thin walled. Um, and holds it in there. This I am going to attempt to just glue it um, to the back side. So, like I said, you want to make sure it is a smaller diameter. So, inch and a half pipe. I got just an inch and a half um, PVC cap. So that's this part here. Um, most of the time PVC caps, they're rounded on the end. I was able to find a flat one, which is crucial. Um, yeah, my design process, I knew that that wasn't gonna work really good. Um, so that's just glued on there. Um, and the end. The length of the pipe, I just left myself about a quarter of an inch, um, just so it doesn't hit the bottom there. Um, yeah, you just don't want it too far out, because then that's just more weight hanging off of your fixture. Um, so you want to keep this as compact as possible. Um, I have a little threaded insert here. Once you locate center, um, crucial, drill your hole out to match the outside diameter. It ends up being about a 5 16 hole. Um, so drill that through. And then I just use rivets, pop rivets to um, go through these three holes. I did have to drill those holes out a little bit. Um, just to get the eighth inch rivets in there, um, not too difficult, um, didn't come out all that straight, but close enough. Um, this piece <laughs> was the linchpin, um, found this at Menards. This is actually made for, um, attaching decks to your house. Um, it's just a spacer, um, half inch, um, thick, um, real solid um, ABS plastic. Um, ended up having to get a little nylon insert um, to go in the center. I was able to find the perfect size. Uh, Yep, 
this is 5 8 inch um, inside diameter and the nylon insert was just a little bit underneath that which was perfect um, gave a little place for glue in there um, and then a quarter inch hole um, that will be for my bolt to go through to tie everything together <coughs> um, it already had these three holes in it um, I went and um, just got a tap set and tap them out um, to put threads into the plastic um, should be good enough um, so this is going to be attached to the outside of the tube via the threaded rod so the threaded rod will go on the three holes that I drilled on the outside here um, I'm probably going to put a locking nut on the inside just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere but this actually seems pretty solid as is um, and then so tube's gonna be out here still got to get the length on that one and the dimensions to cut the rod for that Good morning. I'm going to show you today um, new and improved spider for the secondary mirror. Start with the holder itself um, for the secondary mirror. All this is made out of is a PVC pipe um, with a PVC end cap. And what I have on the end here is one of these little threaded um, collars, I think they're called. Um, and that's just riveted through the three holes coming through the um, this PVC end cap. And I glued on uh, metal washer um, that keeps it up above the rivets so, and the plate comes out in contact with it and doesn't bump into those um, so this is my old spider <laughs> um, main difference is this is quarter by 20 <clears throat> threaded rod um, and I switched it down to um, 830, eight, yeah, number 832 um, threaded rod. Um, I was just afraid that the diffraction was going to be too bad with the quarter inch rod. So, drill the holes out. I use my tap. Um, to thread in there and then I also added some locking um, nuts so those do not move and I threaded it all the way to the inside this is a little nylon insert um, this inside diameter was 5 8 of an inch um, and I got the quarter inch hole for my bolt These are just quarter inch by 20 um, by one inch um, set screws. So this little hockey puck looking thing already had holes in it. So I just tapped them out to the quarter by 20. Um, so those worked out pretty good. Yeah, so give you a quick show on how to assemble this. So this um, metal washer on the back side, it's just 
helps it from um, pulling in um, the Gorilla Glue on my first attempt. I noticed that the nylon insert was moving, so I added this metal washer to the outside so this doesn't pull through. Add my spring. Yep, and the nice thing about this little threaded insert goes right into the spring and holds that in the center. Let's thread this down just a little bit. This is your center locking. Pull that all the way down and then you adjust your set screws to adjust the tilt and there's just enough play to where this can move just a enough um, I didn't want it too sloppy um, so the setup worked out pretty darn good so like I said this is the new and improved um, secondary spider and then I'm also gonna add some heat shrink to the threaded rod yeah I already had the holes drilled out for the quarter inch rod so switching down to the smaller and I also obviously shortened the length of them these ones went all the way to the outside of the tube and then I just use wing nuts um, but you have to remove one of these rods thread it in while it's inside the tube so kind of annoying where this is going to be able to just slide in and I got kind of tough to see because I got everything on top of it um, and these are just little plastic caps um, but the, this little screw, it's a connector cap, I think they're called. So it's just threaded on the inside. Um, threads don't go all the way to the end. Um, these are typically used for like furniture. Um, you'll see them called connector nuts. Um, So you have to make sure you're measuring the distance so it doesn't bottom out um, and cutting the lengths of the rods. So I left myself about an eighth of an inch, I think, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch on the inside of the tube diameter. So these will come from the outside and just thread on here. Yeah, these parts I had to cut a groove um, the other side that has the, the actual screw um, had the not the threads but the, the slot um, to screw it together um, yeah I'm not sure why it doesn't have the slot on both ends to tighten it down together, but just had to cut a little slot with my Dremel tool. Um, yeah, so this will just screw from the outside and then be able to close the cap. Should be good. I also got heat shrink tube on the outside of the X. Obviously, it's silver. I didn't want any silver on the inside of the tube. Uh, I do believe that's about it. Um, move on to the next step. Thank you. So, we have got a finished tube all nice and painted, um, courtesy of my wonderful daughter. 
quick little look around it. Yes, we got some constellations on there, painted in the stars. What we got going on, um, and I'll go over the construction of the tube itself. Okay, the construction of the tube. Um, 10 inch concrete form. And then it is wrapped in fiberglass resin. Um, if you're afraid of fiberglass, it's not that difficult to work with. Um, yeah. By the fiberglass matting, um, it came in a um, square, I think it was 25 inches by 48 or so somewhere in that range. Um, wasn't long enough um, to wrap it all in one piece, so I ended up having to um, piece in a couple of sections of the fiberglass matting, um, which is not that difficult. Um, you do want to try to get that as smooth as possible. Um, there's lots of videos you can look up on how to do fiberglass resin. Um, the technique I used, uh, mix up the resin. I worked with two to three ounces at a time. Um, you don't wanna um, do too much. You get the little measuring cups. It tells you exactly how much of the hardener to mix in. Um, uh, like I said, about two to three ounces um, works pretty good. Um, just get some disposable paint brushes. Put a um, swipe down and then you take the brush and um, pat the matting down into um, the resin itself and saturate it completely. Um, then you just go around the whole thing, um, mix up. It took me about probably four batches, three or four, um, to cover the whole tube. No. Things you want to watch for, make sure you, you have a little bit of an overhang, um, just to kind of give yourself a nice edge. I didn't do the greatest of jobs when I did it. Um, and then I just took my Dremel tool and cut it off flush with the edge of the cardboard. Um, and then fiberglass resin's somewhat smooth, but and you can go over it with Bondo. I use the um, glass filler Bondo, I do believe it's called. Let me take you off here. <laughs> See if it will focus inside the tube. So, inside the tube, there we go, get some light in there, and put some that velvet flocking material um, inside, see if it'll focus on, there's a couple of little plastic caps there, um, that is for these screws. Those are for the spotter scope. So that's going to go on there. Bolts were one inch long, which worked out pretty good. There's a little bit sticking out off the top. And then I just got the little red dot um, viewfinder from, I think it's Orion, if I'm not mistaken. So the 
flocking material um, was 24 inches wide. Um, my tube it said it is 30 inches total, so that leaves me with a little bit um, on the bottom side. What I'm gonna do is use some of the sponge window seal foam. This is three eighths of an inch thick. So that's gonna go right at that line at the end of the flocking. And then I'll probably put one more yeah, about halfway. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna double that up for of three quarters of an inch. Um, this was just spray painted. Um, I might decide to, after I put the foam around these, um, I could put some more flocking material in between. I don't think it's going to be necessary. As long as you got the main part of the tube covered, um, it should be pretty good. Uh, that is the foam. Focus in here a little bit. I added some Gorilla Glue underneath the foam um, just to hold it a little bit more permanently. The adhesive that comes on the foam's not the greatest, so hopefully that'll work. We'll let that sit for quite a while before pulling the tape off. And I might even put some flocking material on the face of the foam just to knock down any shine. That surface is a little, a little bit shiny on the front of the foam. So we'll deal with that a little bit later. Okay. Here's a view from the front of the tube, all the way to the back. Kind of hard to see, but I've got the flocking material on my baffles. Turn it around. So I got double layer on the back side here. That's about three inches from the back of the tube. That front one. Right up to about six inches. That was to the edge of the flocking material. And then I added the flocking to the face of those two baffles to kind of help out. So, should be pretty good for blocking light. <laughs> show you next. I'm putting the viewfinder focuser into place. Um, I just removed the tube and the little focuser wheels just to get them out of my way. Um, these come with the hardware. That is 
is firmly attached. Um, the little nuts that it comes with um, are painted black, so don't need to worry too much about them. The bolt doesn't stick through at all. Um, the other detail that I've added, um, just got some automotive um, trim. Um, worked out pretty nice. It gives a nice decorative edge to the front face. Okay, next part, putting secondary mirror in. Um, make sure, clean it off with nice camera lens cloth. I have a feeling I'm gonna end up doing a little different design on the secondary mirror holder. I think I want to make it so the bolts aren't sticking all the way through. So this is the new and improved Spider. Um, already installed. I didn't make a video installing it. Didn't realize that I didn't have that that clip in my video. Um, so as you can see, it's just the smaller diameter um, rods. Um, what I had, number eight by thirty-two uh, threaded rods. And then it's just these little screw caps that come from the outside. Gives it a much cleaner look. And plus the rods um, stop a quarter inch shorter so you can just slide it into place and you're good to go. Okay, here's the primary mirror cell all assembled. Added the little screw caps into that. If you notice, I put marks on the 90 degrees for the four screws, and I marked my top um, with red. Just to indicate the orientation of the mirror. So if I ever take it out and put it back in, it reassembles nice and easy. Um, this is just to make sure that the four holes are lined up properly. Um, makes it a little bit easier. Um, so that, I do believe, is <laughs> finished. Telescope. Um, just need to do a few more mods here and there to perfect it and get it out into the field and test it out. Okay, on to the final step of the telescope build. How I built my base. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit about the cradle that I built for it. Um, just built it out of some 1x2s and double stacked some plywood there. Um, so worked out inch and a half um, perfectly. All around the rim there, I just used some of this rubber molding, um, just a little weather seal. So um, this I had to play around with. Um, size you got to make sure you cut the circle out 
just enough extra um, to give you the play in it. Um, had a hard time collapsing it down. Um, what holds it together? Just some wing nuts here. Throw these off real quick. Basic design. I can just set in there nice. Um, this should be my final edit um, on all my pieces and parts that I put on this. Um, I ended up using um, countertop from Mica. Um, cut them into some strips and it was the heat applied um, already glued back on it um, yep kind of weird you yeah, put it in the oven <laughs> and heat it up for 25 seconds and then you can stick it on um, I'm assuming you could probably use an iron and press it into place um, My original plan had little square um, feet, um, the little moving pads, um, and cut them into some strips, and that made it too tight, so didn't have much play, so I applied the Formica strips into there also. Um, the swivel base. <laughs> first go around was too sloppy um, your base needs to be real solid um, yeah I tested it out a couple nights ago and yeah if you have any jiggle um, it's not good so so in between is it's a lazy Susan a six inch um, Lazy Susan um, ba little bearing um, picked that up at Home Depot and actually really cheap um, like six bucks um, but wasn't sturdy enough so what I needed to do <laughs> kind of over engineered the bottom here um, what I ended up doing is I needed support um, around the outside edge um, other designs I've seen is just have two pieces of um, plastic cut out into circles and slide around on that or slide right on the wood um, um, might be a good enough design um, this is what I ended up going with I just got some their carriage bolts and then on the um, head of the um, bolt, I just got the um, little plastic um, moving pad feet, um, the small little one inch diameters, and just glued them on there. And I just got some locking nuts. I'll probably end up cutting the extra length of the bolt off um, just because it's not needed. Is spin pretty freely, and that'll apply the pressure. Um, with a little threaded insert. With a little bar nub on that. Um, got a nylon washer underneath that, and that's just to help keep the pressure nice and tight on there um, yeah, the box frame obviously just made out of some plywood um, put the um, flocking material just cut out the half circles there um, that's just for the cradle so it doesn't rub on there um, yep I'll do 
do some artwork painting on the outside of it eventually. I'm thinking of doing some moon sequences all the way around. Um, the bottom just got some aluminum one inch bars, and threaded carriage bolts on there also. And that's just to level it out um, when you're out in the field. So it's nice and even. Um, should be enough play in there. Uh, one thing I noticed, um, this sits really low. So I'll probably build a little platform, like six to 10 inches um, tall, just to get me up off the ground a little bit. Um, I'm planning on just having a <clears throat> little stool along with me, a five gallon bucket or something like that. Um, but as it is right now, yeah, it sits really, really low. Um, so I am a pretty tall guy, so adjust accordingly to your design. Um, so I do believe this is the final makeup of my design. I'm hoping this has been informative and give you some good information on how to build your own. Um, here's a little picture of the paint job that I did. Nice little added detail. And yes, I do play guitar there in the background. I'm gonna give you a spin around here. So. Like I said, turned out pretty nice. <laughs>